uh, no need to plough through them, but just to point out there is a, a trip to Skegness listed in there, and the stewards will collect forms, completed forms if you wish to go, and the money. And an extra notice here from Sandra. Uh, Sandra and friends will be holding a plant stall on Saturday the 17th of June. Matlock Market. Ah, oh, Matlock Market. Ah, oh, lovely. Um, please would you support by buying or just coming along to say hi. Thank you. And a short prayer to begin. We gather this morning in many places with many thoughts. We pause together now to settle, to reflect and to give thanks for all that makes our lives special. May we recognize the divine grace that is always with us. May we be filled with the spirit to bring love, compassion and hope to those places where it is needed. May we find peace and renewal in this service this morning. And through us, may that peace fill the world. Amen. Thank you, Geraldine. Could everybody here and also at home in your own home, welcome, welcome all. Um, today is actually Methodist Home Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So the first part of the service, where you're all children, we're all children of God, we're going to just be sort of having a little think about that. But our opening song is Celebrate. Thank you. That was a good start. Wasn't that lovely? That wasn't that lovely. I want to show you something. Have you ever had this experience where you say to a friend or a family member, I like chocolate? And next minute you know every birthday, every Christmas. Well, I happened to say to somebody, one of our four daughters, uh, four daughters, I let that settle, four. <laughs> four daughters, and he's still alive at the back there. Um, so I said in, I like jigsaws. I now have 25. And I've bought just uh, one to show you. It's a long way away, but you're going to have to bear with me. A thousand piece. It's, it's lovely. And it's, he restores my soul. And it's got uh, Bible verses. And it, it really is lovely. It, gorgeous, in fact. So I, I thought, how lovely. I opened it up. It comes in a beautiful posh bag. A thousand minute pieces. So it's still in the box. And I have 24 others of a similar ilk. And I just want to share that with you before we start. But that is pretty enormous. So I've bought another one with me, which I think is far more manageable. Uh, well, they're not quite 12, but it's 100 pieces. I could have thought, bought a 12-piece one. I didn't think of that. But this is, this is, this is actually 30 pieces. And all the, it's, they're all numbered. And it's really lovely. And it's a scene of the seaside and there's trains. And it's a children's jigsaw. Uh, but it, I, just, I just love it. I love the touch and it's just lovely. But what I'm trying to say, and if you're all children, so bear with me, is the fact that if you, when you tip it out, which bit are you looking for that's the most important, would you say? If you were doing a jigsaw, what would you look for first? The edges. So I've got an edge there. Hence why I've got a large, there you go. At home, you'll probably see this clearer than everybody here. But there, so I've put a corner piece. So you do the corner pieces. Would you say they were the most important bit? So you can imagine how many corner pieces I'd have to struggle with with that. Struggle. What about the middle bit there, then? Is our middle bits important, would you say? Or the most colourful bits? Yeah. This is quite good because it's got numbers on the back, but so you'd go for that bit. But what Paul says is that this is the church is the body of Christ. We're all made up of that, of different parts. No one bit 
is more important than another. Whether you feel you're on the outside rim or whether you think you're in the middle, you are all important because we all make up that big picture, don't we? We all make up that picture. So the next thing we're going to do, and you might, if you can, able to stand, and it's a song I'm doing. Join in if you can, because it's not scripted. Are you ready? So if you can stand, please stand. If you can't, you can manage seated, I hope. You see, the thing is, all, even, all of our bits are important, but we need usually, most of them usually working to make things whole. And there will be people here who've got issues with different parts of the body, but the rest of us as a group and a family help that, don't we? Because we look out for each other. I remember doing that, though, and it's head, shoulders, cheese on toast, <laughs> cheese on toast. I was going to do that, but, you know, I had to draw the line. But it's about, isn't it? It's about just remembering where we are in this place, yes? And how important we are. And for Methodist Homes Sunday, we think about those that aren't here, can't be with us this morning, people you might know who are in nursing homes at this moment. And also people who don't see anybody. Family who might place them in a nursing home and then don't go again. They're safe, they're loved, and they get on with their lives, and you have to respect that. But there are people in nursing homes, and those that care for them are their family and they make up that body. And when I go and do services there, that becomes the body of Christ, that becomes their church, where they are loved and respected. And they then form part of that big picture. Amen. No more singing like that, I can promise you. I think I will maybe have a break now. Because we do forget there are the people here that vacuum, that move chairs, don't we? And it just happens miraculously. But people actually have to come and do that. So it's everybody who has a job here. So thank you for making us unique and special, dear Lord. Please help us recognize and use our gifts. Help us to work together as your body and help one another to do your will. Thank you for your love. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I think that all hymns are prayers. Yes? Some of them are, I spend a lot of time when I'm thinking about the theme, and my theme is Mission Unlimited. Mission Unlimited. And this particular one I'm going to use, I'm going to say, we're using as a prayer. In this house, all people will be welcome. In this house, all people find love. Open the doors so all the world may enter. Open your hearts and share the love of God. Let the cross shine out like a beacon, bringing hope to all who need your love. As we sing our song of adoration, let our lives reflect the love of God. We are here to worship in God's presence, singing songs of worship, songs of love. Just as this place bears witness to God's splendor, may our lives bear witness to his love. For the church is more than bricks and concrete, more than glass and metal, nails and wood. It is the lives of all those who serve him and who show the world the love of God. Amen. And we're going to sing now, Seek Ye First. And there's this lovely chorus, and no doubt there'll be lots of harmony. Our readings are from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 9 to 13, and then verses 18 to 26. I'm reading from the Good News Bible, uh, and page 13, that's page 13 in the Church Bibles. Jesus got into the boat and went back across the lake. Sorry, I've started in the wrong place. 
Jesus left that place. And as he walked along, he saw a tax collector named Matthew sitting in his office. He said to him, follow me. Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having a meal in Matthew's house, many tax collectors and other outcasts came and joined Jesus and his disciples at the table. Some Pharisees saw this and asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such people? Jesus heard them and answered, People who are well do not need a doctor, but only those who are sick. Go and find out what is meant by the scripture that says, It is kindness that I want, not animal sacrifices. I have not come to call respectable people, but outcasts. And from verse 18. While Jesus was saying this, a Jewish official came to him, knelt down before him, and said, My daughter has just died, but come and place your hands on her, and she will live. So Jesus got up and followed him, and his disciples went along with him. A woman who had suffered from severe bleeding for 12 years came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, If only I touch his cloak, I will get well. Jesus turned round and saw her and said, Courage, my daughter. Your faith has made you well. At that very moment, the woman became well. Then Jesus went into the official's house. When he saw the musicians for the funeral and the people all stirred up, he said, Get out, everybody. The little girl is not dead. She's only sleeping. Then they all laughed at him. But as soon as the people had been put out, Jesus went into the girl's room and took hold of her hand, and she got up. The news about this spread all over that part of the country. Thanks be to God. Amen. I, uh, I go into two nursing homes. One is residential nursing, where to describe dementia would be someone walking around with two or three handbags, who doesn't do that? Who maybe uh, collects coat hangers, who doesn't do that? So nothing unusual. But the other one I go into, uh, people are, have profound, de dementia is profound, and uh, sometimes they've lost the ability to speak, would need prompting to eat or to swallow, uh, and possibly, well, usually towards the end of their lives, within a year of the end of their lives. And when I go in to remind them that we are the body of the church and they are important, I do this, and I do it every time. I place the candle on as I speak and say, God brought light out of the darkness. And we are all light. We're all that shining light. That he gave us the word because it's important that we understand that everything is of God. And he gave us his son who is always with us. So each bit, so whatever I do, we start in that way. Because it, pr it prompts memory, it prompts understanding, and then silence, even though it's been often been absolute chaos before. I've gone and I've placed things out and somebody will walk by and I'll finish your stuff. And I, you just got to, you have to carry on. But sometimes your belongings go wandering off and you pick them up later. Uh, and and that's, that's fine. But it's a way of establishing where we are, where we are, wherever we are, those symbols are important. And that no matter where you are in your life, bits missing, you're still part of the whole picture. So we're going to pray now. And when I say, Lord, to whom can we go? 
if you can answer, you have the words of eternal life. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Thank you for the gifts you have given us, individually and collectively, and help us to use them to further your kingdom here on earth. Eyes to see and perceive, ears to hear and listen, hands to work and create, minds to think and innovate, memories to remember and learn from, hearts to love and worship. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Lord, we confess that we have not always followed your words. There have been moments when we choose other options. We choose to join in the gossip and not to speak out on behalf of the misunderstood. We choose to take sides with the strong because we fear the consequence of being found alongside the weak. We fire back an e a text in anger. We hit send on an email in the heat of the moment. We spoke a harsh word of judgment, and we regret the fact that what has been said just can't be taken back. We allow pride to get the better of us, and we ask for your forgiveness and mercy, Lord. We thank you that you don't treat us as our sins deserve and your love and your word permit a new start. As we move on from this place, may others see a difference in us. May we surprise others with the gift of forgiveness and our capacity to move on and make fresh starts. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Lord, we pray for all people who are in trouble and fear today. And we particularly think about the flooding in Ukraine, the people of Russia, India, the train disaster, the stabbings in school and on the streets, the young people deaths by e-bikes, For those who are sad because someone they have loved has died. For those who are anxious because someone is ill or in pain. For those who are lonely because someone they love is not there for them. And in a moment of silence, or we'll just bring to mind aloud or on our hearts, those we are concerned about at this time. We pray for those who are sitting in front of us at this time. Those who are sitting to the side of us. Those sitting behind us. We pray for the empty chairs. Those who can't be with us and those we hope would be with us. Lord, bless those who are tired because they have too much to do. Those who are struggling with finance, who are facing the prospect of unemployment. Those who are unhappy because of an unkind word or action. Lord, surround those in need with your wisdom. Those in pain, those struggling with your spirit and your healing. All those struggling in mind and body. Your life-giving peace. 
Lord, to whom can we go? You have the word of eternal life. Lord, you call us to follow in your footsteps. Help us to know what this looks like in each situation where we find ourselves. Help us to know when following you means washing the feet of others. When it means turning over tables. When it means going to a party at the house of an outsider. When it means breaking down the barriers that divide people. Divide people from each other in the homes where we live, the places we work, the communities where we worship. We grieve the fact that our world is divided and we ask that you work powerfully in our small lives and our big world to break down the walls that divide. Break down the walls within our own lives which hold us back from reaching out to others which prevent us from seeing the best in other people, in other cultures, which stop your love getting in and your blessing getting out. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Lord, in gratitude, in deep gratitude for this moment, this place, this world, we give ourselves to you. Take out to live as charged, take us out to live as changed people, because we have been touched by the living Lord and can't remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much of us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. Living Lord, accept our lives and accept our prayers this day and every day. You have the words of eternal life and in you we trust. Amen. And let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. We're going to sing again, Brothers, Sisters. Aren't the words lovely? Absolutely wonderful. Just going back uh, to my nursing home experience, we always start with the same hymn. And while I just talk for a few minutes, maybe you can have a think what that could be. We always end with the same hymn. When it comes to the prayers of intercession, we always sing the same hymn. And I use props so that as soon as I with effort, blow up a blow-up globe and hold it in my hand, we sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. And we always sing that when we're going to do prayers of intercession because it's all about memory. And for you, some of the songs I've chosen will bring back memories for you, or certain phrases and words, am I right? And some of them act like an earworm. Some do to me, and I'm singing it all day and all week, and that's lovely, and that's how it should be. We have a young neighbour, and they've got a little girl called Florence, who is lovely. She's a redhead, and I'll just leave it there. She's five, or she's six. And a mum went shopping the other day, and I had this WhatsApp message. We live next door, but she WhatsApps. I mean, she just could call out, but she WhatsApps. And she'd been out shopping, and this is a couple of months ago, and she'd seen a sign in a window that said, all Easter items half price. So she thought, oh, right. Because you know how expensive chocolate is and coffee and everything's expensive. But certain items, have they not got security tabs on? So that if you try and pick up a bar of chocolate, you get thrown to the floor. But No, you don't. But, it, but it's a bit like that. It's a way, isn't it? Because they're, they're so concerned now about, about food prices. All Easter items half price. My neighbour went to the shop, Laura, a few days later, thinking, I'll stock up for next year. And, the, and, they, and she was traipsing everywhere. It was Tesco. And she's going around everywhere. And she, found, she finally found someone to help her, which is challenging. And asked, and they said, they've all gone. We put them all away. How quickly Easter comes into the, it goes in the contemporary society we lived in. This was only the week after Easter. 
and I think it was Tuesday after Easter Monday, she saw half price, went back a week later and they put everything away. How quickly Easter goes, yet the Easter message and the power of Pentecost are crucial to the health and mission of the Christian community. You can nod or say yeah, yes. It's fundamental. In the post-Easter Pentecostal period, we are reminded of the central message of the teaching and preaching of Jesus. And the reading with her today, which was wonderful, wasn't it? Just wonderful. Jesus steps into three situations where a religious leader may typically have been expected to go in, in, in his contemporary society. In fact, each of these three encounters he has in this passage might have been deemed unclean by contemporary Jewish law, another system that has played its part in exclusion making whole groups of people as ritually unclean because of their profession, heritage, or condition. In the account of Jesus and the tax gatherers and the healing of the woman and the raising of the dead girl, we are at the center of the gospel message, mission. The scene is one of dramatic grandeur as the guests were reclining and dining in Roman style. I don't think I'd fancy that, would you, lying down to eat? Yeah, in, yes, all the grapes, the whole thing. Jesus welcomes the tax collectors and those associated with sinful practices and those who neglected the religious law. You can imagine you wouldn't be able to hear a pin drop, could you, when they walked in. Sinners in his society were those who are careless of their mind, new shy of the law, and those guilty of serious moral lapses. The Mishnah hospitality will be offered to the poor and the struggling but not extended to the wicked or evil so you certainly weren't going to be welcome anywhere for hospitality yet Jesus sought out Matthew and the sinners and didn't wait for them to repent he didn't wait for them to say we're so sorry well then come on down he didn't he didn't wait for that here Jesus says there is no substitute for compassion the pride and loveliness of the supposed religious are offensive. Their sinfulness is condemned by implication. The action of Jesus disturbs and threatens a settled world. It suggests there are no boundaries. Do what you like. He was seen by the religiously righteous as becoming profane by being involved with sinners, the bleeding, the sick and the dead. In the midst of Jesus' association with the unclean and excluded, the leader of the synagogue, a religious authority figure, sought the company and power of Jesus. They are united by various needs and responded to positively by Jesus. But Jesus, I couldn't think of the right word, mixes things up, the included and the excluded. Perhaps this is the heart of the gospel message, that we are called to articulate in practice. The church is called to offer its mission through care of the obvious outsider and insider. The distressed, the suffering, and those who don't conform to our expectations. Jesus tells us all are in need and are included in the love and concern of God. I had in a nursing home I go into, which um, doesn't have a history of chaplaincy, and I've had to, through the power of God and a lot of tears from me, get a service there once a fortnight. And it isn't easy, because they're just, it's now a year or so in, but they're just still not used to it and I'll have people talking at the back, staff. It's getting better, it's getting better. Because the people that are there in that particular home know what you are saying without the use of symbols and repetition. And a crunch came a couple of weeks ago where one of them turned round and said, I'll use the word shush. It wasn't shush, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, it was a bit firmer because she wanted to hear what was being said and they were making a noise. 
and things have settled. Things have settled. But it's about being told there, we don't need this here because they're here. And they don't, so the spiritual needs weren't really important because they were loved and cared for. But the spiritual needs now they realize are a big part of what makes you who you are and how well you feel, even if you're physically off your perch. Hands up who's not off their perch this morning. So, but we all need, don't we, that spiritual, we all have a spiritual need, we have that need. So to exclude a whole group of people is, is very hard. Here then is a command to knock down the barriers between the church and those who lack status and worth, yeah? Who lack worth. Jesus says they, they who have nothing other than the mercy of God are important. The mission of the church is not just to pass food out, but to set a place for them at the feast. So it's not just about having stuff to give out, it's about welcoming them to your feast, wherever that is. We are called to follow Jesus and be open and available to the abused, the broken, the neglected, and the forgotten. Disciples are those who risk breaking with the familiar in order to follow Jesus. Every person who stands in the midst of a circle of inclusion and everyone who has the status of great in the kingdom of heaven has felt the sting of being on the outside and excluded. All such realize that they are inside the circle as a matter of mercy, not merit. Yeah? It's God's mercy. When it comes to the kingdom of heaven, we are all outsiders. Now, this may be a bit, uh, this is where you think, get the men in the white coats, but I'm going to say it. I like to believe, I like to believe, many non-religious people harbour a secret lingering desire to be persuaded. Radical? How might any non-religious person be persuaded? We could spend, no we won't, but how could we persuade them? What might convince those outside this place for we might often see as cynical, disinterested, and detached. Yeah? It might, be, it might be, says Jesus, the example of transformed lives that illuminate his teaching and practice. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? The offering of compassionate welcome and care to those who don't consider themselves worthy of it. The reaching out in love and concern to the dispossessed and the victim, the refugee, and those seen as unacceptable and unattractive, yet who are loved and treasured by God. Actions, not words alone. I have never personally known anybody that's come to Jesus through looking at a church website. Is that a shock? No. I have never known anybody who's come to know Jesus in their lives through a I'm going to use the word stonking, too late, said it. A stonking good newsletter from a church. I haven't. Where I have seen that person moved is by action. Somebody telling them what Jesus has done in their lives. Witnessing. This is what I was. And it isn't about uh, I was blind and then I could see... I don't mean that, because we don't all follow that pattern, do we? And then I had this, and then that happened. Sometimes it's fairly murky and fairly a strange way, an odd path. But we found Jesus. And no matter how odd and unusual and doesn't follow the pattern, tell it. Because that's what brings Jesus. If you can be transformed, then maybe I've got a chance. Maybe I've got a chance. Actions, not words. 
You are all welcome here. I was made very welcome. You are all welcome here. There is space for you in God's big story of love. This is what radical inclusion looks like. There is space for us, all of us. Because it also comes with a challenge to create spaces where others feel that they are included too. These stories and so many of the other stories that Jesus tells or gets involved in are a reminder that everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. But they're also reminded that if we ever think we are part of the in crowd or the clique, you ever been to a church where you feel there's a clique? And it's like wading through treacle. We are the ones who get to control, or you think you're the ones that control the door, that we are in charge of who comes in and who goes out, then we've missed the point. We've missed the point. Think of the parable of the wedding feast or the Samaritan helping the beggar on the road or Jesus helping lepers and rebuking religious leaders. This Jesus is an invitation that is radically inclusive and that should make us really uncomfortable if we think we've got it sorted. So some questions, rhetorical, unless you wish to say, how are you at playing a part in excluding others? What barriers and borders do you put in place or help to maintain? Who do you think feels excluded from this church community? Matlock's a big place. How could we change that? These are difficult questions, aren't they? Yeah? And they're difficult for us to wrestle with, but worth the time to make space for it if we are to address the challenge that Jesus' radical inclusion sets before us. If we want to be mission unlimited, if we want this place to be mission unlimited, something for you to think about. What is it? you could do as a body with all the gifts and talents that make up that picture all of you age is no barrier because we all have gifts and talents you get, you get older you just use them in a different way don't you yeah but what do we all do really well pray powerful when we go from this place, a wash with God's grace offered to you through story and song, share that grace so that others might learn just how special it is. Embody God's radical grace and strive to make the world a better place, this place a better place, out there a better place. Don't cease until all are wrapped in the love of God, unable to flourish and grow. Don't cease until the kingdom of God is realized as she would want it to be. God's grace is exclusively for everyone. Mission unlimited. Amen. We'll just have a moment just to, before we sing, just to, I think we just, we just need to pause and reflect. Lord Jesus Christ, we can feel your presence and the Holy Spirit moving amongst us, anointing and settling on us, disturbing us, questioning us. And we know that you want us to be bold and to use our gifts and talents to make this body, this body, powerful in you. To make this place a beacon for all, and that no one 
feels excluded. I need some of us here maybe feel a bit like the elbow in the body, the one that does the prodding. That's good. We need everybody. We need those with the feet and those with the hands. But we need those with the the eyes and the mouth. Help us to be witnesses for you. Let our actions speak louder than anything we can say. In you we trust. Amen. We come now to our our closing hymn. Let us, we couldn't sing anything else, could we? Let us build a house. Let us build a house. All are welcome. All are welcome. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, please accept these gifts, these tokens, for the continuation of your work in this place. Amen. Let's share the grace together. We can't hold hands, we're all a bit spread apart, aren't we? But let's sort of reach out. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.